Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, welcome to all of you in the third lecture, uh, which is on bioenergetics. Uh, bioenergetics is chapter seven. Uh, in the last two lectures, we finished chapter six, which was enzyme. In this chapter, we will cover the energy relationships. We will study energy relationships uh, in the living organisms in the cell and their transformations from one form to another form. There are so many metabolic chemical reactions going on inside our body which we discussed in the chapter 6 in enzymes. Here we will study these processes in detail that how energy is being stored and how energy is being released in which form in, uh, in which form energy is released from the food stuff we are eating and how energy is being stored in all these things we will study in this chapter and its name is bioenergetics uh, dear students, in chapter 4 you study the cell st structure and function in detail and in chapter 6 we study the role of enzymes in different metabolic, uh, in different metabolic chemical reactions. Dear students, first of all introduction, a little about the bioenergetics. Dear students, bioenergetics. A cell is an open system. What does it mean by cell is an open system? Material constantly come inside in the cell and they are leaving the cell constantly. For example, in the red blood cell having hemoglobin, they are getting oxygen and constantly the carbon dioxide is getting out from it. Along with that, different type of materials are getting entered in the cell by this process of endocytosis and different metabolic wastes are constantly removed from the cell by the process of exocytosis which you study in the chapter 4 in detail so when materials are getting entered in the cell there are two types of reactions usually carried out. The synthesis reactions in which different molecules are synthesized and the oxidation reactions in which usually the molecules are oxidized and energy is being released. By definition, bioenergetics is the study of energy relationships and energy transformations in living organisms. Let me to elaborate this definition. Energy relationships and energy transformation. What does it mean by energy transformations? In physics, uh, in, you studied that energy is in two forms, basically in two forms, the, the kinetic energy and potential energy. The potential energy is usually that energy is referred to the, uh, this term is referred to that energy uh, in which energy is stored and kinetic energy is the energy which drive different kind of processes, physical processes, physical activities, different type of activities are driven by the kinetic energy. So constantly the solar energy is converting into potential energy and potential energy into kinetic energy. These whole uh, processes and uh, chemical reactions are uh, covered by the bioenergetics. Actually, here we will study the quantitative relationship of energy with the cell also. What does it mean by quantitative uh, study of the energy in the cell or in the living bodies? For example, here we will study that how much energy we get by uh, we, we, we can get from a molecule uh, which is a carbohydrate, lipid or protein. How much amount of energy we can receive? How much energy is being stored in a 
bond, a chemical bond, and uh, how much energy we need to make a bond. So this is these all are quantitative studies, and here we will also study the quantitative uh, study of the energy in the cell. Examples are uh, photosynthesis and respiration. Uh, photosynthesis is a great example of anabolism. Uh, I want to repeat the definition of the anabolism. First of all, we have to study, uh, we have to know about the metabolism. All of you know the definition of the metabolism. Metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions that are going on inside a uh, living body. It has two types, anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is a constructive process. Respire, or photosynthesis, we have photosynthesis is a great example of the anabolism because it's wholly, wholly a constructive process in which a molecule is being synthesized. A glucose molecule is synthesized in the presence of sunlight with the help of chlorophyll from carbon dioxide and water molecule. Dear students, uh, here we store energy. The light energy is converted into potential energy chemical energy in the form of glucose and then in the respiration these molecules I will see glucose molecules are broken down and energy is being uh, released. Here we have a flow chart. Uh, first of all reduction of carbon dioxide and this process is also called as photosynthesis. Uh, here we put energy in the form of light and a and a food stuff are good. For example, glucose is obtained because glucose is the product of the photosynthesis. Then uh, oxidation of this food molecule occur and we get we get energy in the form of ATP along with it some energy is being released in the form of heat. How energy how ATP is formed, what is ATP? ADP, adenosine diphosphate plus PI, PI inorganic phosphate and here we got an ATP molecule. ATP is an energy currency which, which we will explain in shall line uh, in, in, in the, coming, uh, the coming topic is the uh, ATP. So we will explain it in detail. Then uh, this ATP is transformed into use, utilize in different kind of activities that is active transport. Um, all of you know what is active transport. Active transport is the form of transport in which molecules move against the concentration gradient with the expenditure of energy. This, this, this definition you people know very well. So what sort of energy it need? It need energy in the form of ATP. Secondly, maintenance. Maintenance, continuously new cells are formed, old cells die, new cells are formed, and repairing of the body usually carried out with the passage of time. New cells formation needs energy in the form of energy. And chemical synthesis, different chemical molecules are synthesized by the help of energy. Dear students, there is no none of the activity, none of the activity in the living body can be performed without the expenditure or without energy. Simply, I will give you a very minor example. In the cell division, mitosis, uh, I will give an example of mitosis. The chromosome move from one pole to the equator. At least 30 ATPs need to move one chromosome from the polar region to the equator. 30 ATP molecules are used. So usually the students think that how energy is being utilized in the living particles. Inshallah, in our coming uh, topic, we will cover this area too that how energy is being utilized in different processes. Dear students, our next topic is redox reactions. In the previous
topic we discussed that uh, we, we, we talked about the bioenergetics and energy transformations and how energy is transformed from one farm to another farm here. We will study redox. Basically, this redox is a combination of the reduction and oxidation reactions. These two reactions are simultaneously happening in the major biochemical processes like photosynthesis and respiration. The redox is operating, redox is operating these two major processes. Dear students, life processes and living organisms need a constant flow of energy and these are unseizable metabolic processes which constantly in which constant flow of energy is usually uh, usually occur. These two uh, reactions in chemistry you, you, you study that what is reduction and oxidation but a little I want to add here that the gain of electrons or the loss of oxygen or the gain of hydrogen is called as reduction. You will you will see the reduction process in photosynthesis. You will see the reduction process in respiration. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, the gain of oxygen, the loss of hydrogen. These are the properties of the oxidation reactions. Dear student, oxygen, if combined with another oxygen, with another oxygen, they make a stable molecule, but it is not a good source of energy. But if it combined with another item like carbon or hydrogen, it forms an unstable uh, compound. And if you if you want to if, if we drag these electrons back to the oxygen, they release energy, and this energy is then stored in the form of ATP molecules, and then it is utilized in different metabolic processes. Here, if you see, if we we we, we lost these two electrons, uh, th this process is called as oxidation. If we gain the two electrons, then this is called as reduction. So, in in, in our coming topics, inshallah, we we will uh, explain the role of the reduction and oxidation both in the metabolic processes in the respiration and uh, photosynthesis and respiration which are the uh, major metabolic reactions that are going on in living bodies and what is the role of reduction and oxidation in these major biochemical reactions in the coming topic uh, I'm going to start the ATP which is the energy currency uh, so let's uh, study the ATP. Dear students, our next topic is ATP, the cell's energy currency. Dear students, you know about the currency, different countries have different currencies like Saudi Arabia, have Saudi Arabia. Uh, USA or US dollar, Pakistan and Pakistan country. If you have a, a, an amount of currency, you can buy, you can purchase different type of items and every, every item you purchase has specific price. Just like that, in the cell, energy is present in the form of energy coins and that energy coin is called as ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. It was discovered in 1929 by Carl Lohmann who proposed, uh, who discovered it, but later on uh, with Fritz Lehmann who um, in 1941 proposed that it's a major energy currency and uh, he got Nobel Prize uh, by, by this idea that it's a main energy currency 
If, if we talk about its evolution, it's not confirmed evolution in history, we have the when it evolved, but as it's a major energy currency and for to drive any kind of metabolic reaction, we need energy. So it has evolved very early, right? The structure is mainly made up of adenosine and three phosphates. Let me explain. Adenine, which is a nitrogenous base of RNA and DNA. The DNA have four nitrogenous bases adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. The adenine and guanine are thought to be purines because they are double bed structures. And cytosine and thymine are thought to be single ring structure and pyramidal. They are called pyramidal. Now, one nitrogenous base adenine and ribose sugar. When they combine, it is called nucleoside. If we attach organic phosphate, then it will become nucleotide. As nucleotide is a fundamental structural and functional unit of the DNA. Here we have nucleoside. Adenosine is the nucleoside mean adenine and ribose. Ribose means a five carbon sugar. A five carbon sugar and adenine combined to form adenosine. And when three phosphate, inorganic phosphates are attached, it's called adenosine triphosphate. If one phosphate is added, adenosine monophosphate. If two phosphates are added, adenosine diphosphate and adenosine triphosphate, if three phosphates are added. The bond here is currently well bond, but it's a high energy bond, that's why it's currently. Let me to clear a very important point here. The student must think about it that there are four nitrogenous bases adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. About thymine and cytosine, we can say that these are the pyramidine. So, uh, probably they will not contribute to form any energy molecule. But what about the guanine? Guanine is also a double ring structure. Why just only adenine? So, dear students, guanine, uh, GTP is also found. Where it is found? In the Krebs cycle of animal cell. Krebs cycle of animal cell, which is a very vital uh, step of the cellular respiration, aerobic cellular respiration, the GTP is found. But GTP is soon convert into ATP. And ATP is considered to be as a main currency molecule, a main energy currency molecule. But it's not fact that uh, rather than adding, there is no other molecule which can form energy molecule. Yes, GTP is uh, there, GTP is found, but it's not uh, abundantly found. All the enzymes we have, all the uh, machinery, uh, the cellular machinery facilitation is to found the ATP in, in, in large amounts. That's why it is considered to be as the main energy currency, right? And how we will get energy and how it is found, let's discuss how ATP is formed and how we will get energy from the ATP. Dear students, how ATP is formed? ATPs are usually formed when metabolic reactions like respiration happen in the living cell that usually release energy and that is energy is released uh, that energy is stored in the form of ATP. If we have, how we will form an uh, ATP molecule? First, an AMP adenosine monophosphate plus a PI inorganic phosphate plus energy. They will form ADP. The question arises from where this energy will usually come? This energy will usually come from the movement of the electron. Electrons in the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is the chain of protein molecules that are embedded in the membrane of mitochondria. 
mitochondria is the main uh, organ as we previously mentioned in the chapter 4 that it is the power house of the cell how we can call it as the power house of the cell because it it forms energy it forms ATP and this this energy will come from the moment of electron in, in, in the electron transport chain electron transport chain are the series of protein that are embedded in the membrane of the mitochondria when the electrons move they release the energy and that energy is stored and ADP is formed adenosine diphosphate when adenosine diphosphate plus PIA non phosphate and energy it forms in an ADP we get an ADP molecule different food uh, substances uh, have different amount of energy uh, how they are different for example glucose molecule completely oxidized it gives us 36 ADPs but fat molecule or uh, the lipid molecule which 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 are which is 18 carbon it gives us 144 ADPs or 16 carbon it gives us 128 ADPs so different food uh, substances give us different amount of energy now the second question is how it will release energy with ATP plus water. This is a hydrolytic reaction. What you need to put and in an enzyme a catalyst ATP is, is the main enzyme which breaks the ATP and converting into ATP plus PI and 7.3 kilocalories per mole energy is being released. It means if we break this single bond, it will release. 7.3 kilocalories of energy. It will convert into ADP and in very rare cases ADP is also hydrolyzed and it's con it converted into ADP. But ADP uh, is thought to be recycled and again uh, it is absorbing energy as a storing energy and is converting into ADP. Uh, dear students, it's just like your uh, mobile phone. Your mobile phone concentrated have three bars. If it have three bars, it means it's an ATP. You use the, your cell phone and it uh, lost some charge and it converted into ATP having two bars. And again, you you put it uh, to the charger and you you charge your cell phone and again it uh, it got three bar charge. Just like that, it is recharging and utilization. Recharging and utilization. Will we perform any physical activity, any uh, any kind of activity we perform, we utilize ADPs. And these ADPs are recycled and we are eating food again, ADPs are found and this is a continuous process uh, in, in our body. In our bodies and even in the body of every living organism, it's performing specific functions, it's specific jobs they are doing, they are they are utilizing the energies and they are getting the food and food is oxidized and ADPs are found in the ADP. How much ADPs you have is just like how much money you keep in your bank account or how much money you have in your pocket, how much energy you have. It will decide that how much physical activity you can perform. Just like that, how much money you have in the bank, it will decide your shopping, what you want to purchase, what you want to buy. It, it depends upon how much money you have in your pocket or in your account. Just like that, what type of activity activities uh, we want to perform, we need activities. In that amount, we need activities. Every activity has a special, a specific amount of ATP uh, used to perform that particular activity. So, uh, hope that you have learned all about the ATPs, all about the introduction of the biology. In the next lecture, inshallah, we will explain respiration, we will explain, uh, we will explain photosynthesis and then respiration. So, my advice to you, take a balanced diet. Uh, constantly take your ATPs 
and also utilize your ATPs too. It's not a good way that you are getting food, but you are not utilizing do your physical activities and constantly do the exercise because uh, it will uh, keep healthy your body. Along with that, uh, my special message to my students is about uh, coming COVID-19 epidemic. Dear students, how much you stay in the home, that much you are safe. Follow the government instructions regarding the COVID-19 epidemic. Stay in the home, wash your hands thoroughly, don't touch your nose and your facial vision at all uh, because it's a big, uh, big risk to get infection if you are touching any solvent and thoroughly wash your hand. Don't uh, take it on your mind. Don't, uh, don't get the anxiety regarding this COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, this is a, a flu virus usually, but uh, by the evolution it evolved and now it comes in a new form. Uh, it's not a serious issue at all, but the only way is you have you you need to stay in the home. You uh, should be hygienic. These are the two things by which you can prevent yourselves, your families. Uh, so, inshallah. Uh, the world is fighting with this COVID-19. The only thing that we can fight with COVID-19 is the courage and vaccines are on the way. I hope that vaccines uh, soon vaccines will come in the market. But uh, follow the precautionary instructions by the government. Thank you so much.